For more on these worrying accusations of depleted uranium being used by coalition forces in Libya, let's uh, get some comment on it. Cross to Berkeley, California. We're joined there by journalist Con Hallin. Uh, Con, thanks for being on the programme. appreciated. Now, the US denies, doesn't it, using depleted uranium in Libya, and yet we've just heard war veterans in that report there claim that uh, there is evidence showing its use by coalition forces in their airstrikes. To what extent do you think these accusations are true then tonight? Oh, I'm almost certain that they're true. Uh, for instance, the A-10, which is the low-level standard attack plane uh, that the United States uses, and the um, AC-130, which is a large, um, large airplane that, that fires 25 millimeter and 30 millimeter uh, ammunition. Those are all depleted uranium mm. ammunition. I mean, they don't they don't make non depleted uranium ammunition for those. So of course they're using depleted uranium. The other thing is, if you look at some of the damages on the tanks, you'll notice that there's like a single hole in the tank. That is a classic entrance point for a depleted uranium ammunition, particularly a 30 millimeter shell. You know, for non-scientists, you hear, you hear the word uh, uranium, you immediately think danger, but just how dangerous are these depleted uranium bombs? Well, it depends what happens to them. They're dangerous in two ways. It's not that they're terribly radioactive, but when they explode, they explode into a fireball of about 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. That reduces about 70% of the shell to a powder. It's the powder that's the danger. It's not so much that you get it on your skin or something, it's that you breathe it in or you ingest it. And you can do that either as uranium, but it's also because uranium is a very toxic metal, it's a very dangerous heavy metal. Yeah. So it gets into the water table and it does damage to the kidneys and the liver. It's very, very highly dangerous. The World Health Organization has warned against using it. And the U.S. Army, theoretically, has a number of requirements for dealing with it that involve not contaminating yourself. And Colin, the really sinister side to this, it, it, it's the long-term effects, isn't it, that it builds up? This stuff lasts as long as the Earth has been around. This is 4.4 billion years. That's about the that's about the length of the of the Earth. So this is forever, essentially. And the danger to it is, is because it's very heavy. Uranium is extremely heavy. It sinks down low into the ground and it gets into the water table. So the problem will be that 20, 30, 40 years from now, you're going to be have this steady leakage of both toxic metals and uranium into the water tables of these villages. A lot of these things are, are take a long time to develop. Cancers take a long time to develop. So we're not gonna know exactly. Carl, uh, I don't know if you're gonna know the answer to this one. Time's a bit against us, there's a few other things I wanted to ask you. I mean, efforts by a UN subcommittee to ban the use of depleted uranium back in 2002 were vetoed at the time by France, the UK, and the US. Why do you think these countries aren't willing to rule it out, given these consequences you, you're telling us about? Well, the thing about depleted uranium ammunition is that it's spectacularly effective. I mean, it essentially turns four inches of of hardened armor into margarine. It just goes right through it. There, there essentially is no defense against a depleted uranium shell. So, of course, if you're running a war, you want to have depleted uranium ammunition. And the United States is now trading and selling depleted uranium ammunition to a large number of its NATO allies and non-NATO allies, uh, about 25 countries across the world. There are some countries that have refused to use it. Germany and Italy refuse to use it. And Belgium is the first country to actually ban its use. Uh, the Latin American parliament has also voted to declare a moratorium on the use of depleted uranium ammunition. Now, while we're on the topic of the, the, the coalition's ongoing campaign in Libya, today France and the UK criticised NATO's involvement, didn't it, in the Libyan assault, saying that NATO isn't doing enough to destroy the heavy weaponry used by Muammar Gaddafi's forces. Got any views on that? Well, what's happened is the original UN resolution, uh, um, 1973, called for no-fly zone. It did not call for taking part one side in the civil war. It certainly did not call for attacking tanks or personnel or artillery, etc. The United States and, and France and Britain simply added that on. So right now the problem is, is that we're supporting one side in the civil war, which now appears to be a stalemate. We thought it was going to be over quickly. It's not going to be over quickly. And here we are stuck in Libya. I really don't know how 
this is going to come out in the long run. The African Union had a successful meeting with Gaddafi. The rebels have rejected the results of it. I really don't know where this is going in the long time. This was a very ill thought out war. Con Hallinan, thanks for being on the program. Good to hear your thoughts and what you think about these events uh, here on RT. Thank you.